Via San Francisco presents the new Spin Razor. Via's Spin Razor, we think, is the finest razor in the beauty industry, and the new Spin Trio gives you everything you need to appreciate razor cutting and razor texturizing to a level that's never been possible before. The Trio comes with three of the rotating Spin Razors, a silver one, which has a regular standard guarded blade, a blue one, which comes with a six-tooth texturizing blade. Now, this is a unique blade that creates strong, aggressive texture in the hair and allows you to do it effortlessly using your razor. And then the red razor blade is loaded on the red razor and this is a nine tooth soft texture blade that's going to create a more subtle texture, more of a blending type effect. And again, being able to switch back and forth between the three razors by having the three handles of the Spin Trio allows you to explore using all three during the course of a single haircut without having to stop and change blades. I know you're really going to appreciate your Spin Trio and especially after you get a chance to watch the DVD that includes two full haircuts done with the Trio razors. And I think once you can see the kind of great textured looks that you can create with these razors, you're going to be as excited as we are about the Trio razors. Now let's meet Mo. Mo is an attractive young lady and Allison Rhodes is going to do a really aggressive edgy cut on her that I think you're going to find pretty amazing, especially when you see how quickly and easily she's able to do this entire cut using just the Trio razors really revamp her look. It's kind of an outgrown, funky, fun style that she has grown out. So we're going to really take this side a lot shorter and make it a very asymmetrical cut with a nice steep angle in here, but maintaining a lot of the length on this side, creating a lot of texture in through here. A little bit of shorter layers on top to really get that kind of punky, fun, faux hockey feel. And then, um, probably touch up the bangs just a little bit too. And with that, this is gonna be a primarily razor cut, but in the bang area, we are gonna use the next shear just to get that nice precision edge that you really can't get with the razors. The razors are designed more for texture, weight removal. In the front, we want that nice hard bang, so we're gonna go with the next shear. And right now, I'm just getting her nice and wet. You can razor cut dry hair, but ideally, it just, tends to glide through the hair better when it's wet and you have some kind of cutting lotion in there. You don't want to rip through the hair, causing breakage and breaking out that cuticle and making a lot of frizz. That's why most people don't like using razors, but if it's done correctly, you can get a really fun textured cut. To start this haircut, it's gonna require a lot of sectioning. You do wanna make sure that you kind of have everything mapped out before you start. You don't wanna cut into something that you might have wanted to leave longer by not sectioning it properly. And since I do want to have this nice steep angle here going from short to long, I'm going to section this whole thing out and then do subsections while I'm cutting. Now Mo likes to have some fun facts to her hair, so this section is going to be a lot shorter and really fun, and there's a really cool technique with the razor to get that to a nice and flat way. This piece we are going to leave longer, so I am going to leave that out, and then blend into it after. Now we're going to use our regular straight blade razor for this which is a silver handle. And what's really nice about these razors is they are ergonomic and they do swivel, which allows you to do all kinds of texture and layers without tweaking your arm and your wrist in all kinds of funky directions. So I just in here, I'm gonna start right behind the ear. Elevate it up a little bit and then come right behind my fingers and just kind of lightly scrape downwards. What that's gonna do is let that lay nice and smooth with no funky lines. Sometimes when you use a shear for shorter pieces like this, you tend to get 
a little stacked appearance or some weird layers that don't blend very well and you have to do extra work. What's nice about this technique is that it's one cut and you're done. I'm just following my guide. Right behind my fingers, you can see how smooth this is gliding through the hair. Now for this piece, to blend this in, do a little over directing, leaving out the very front. Coming back to my original section, and that's gonna maintain some length, but still blend this in. Find my guide and just come down. Now we have a nice gradual blend from the short into the long. Right here by the ear. I do want to blend this down. And this is where the swivel really comes in handy. Instead of having to manipulate yourself over, all I do is swivel. Get a nice line. And then you can just kind of use your judgment and pick out little pieces. Again, you can swivel and come up underneath and really define that line. as easy as that. The right razor cut really makes your haircuts a lot faster, more efficient, and really a lot better. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a little subsection. Kind of extend some of this short down a little bit doing another kind of elevated and you do want to move it in the direction you're going and by elevating it up you're leaving a lot of this length down here. I'm just going to follow my guide and kind of move the hair in the direction I want it to flow. Gives you a nice subtle soft movement there and I'm going to go back in with some texture and really define that more section down right above it. Pick up a little bit of that section just to have a guide. Elevate up. And again, the beauty of this is I can keep my elbow down and swivel the motion instead of moving my whole arm. So I can just swivel it. See how we get that nice gradual movement in here, everything's flowing this direction. Pick up this whole top section, bring a little bit of the last one. There's our little guide, so we're just going to come right behind our fingers and swivel. Do it slow so you can really see, I'm just scooping. While I'm moving the hair, in the direction I want it to fall. Okay, now that we have a really nice angle in here, before I drop this down, I'm going to switch over to our coarse six tooth texturizer. What this is going to do, I want to maintain this weight line down here, so I'm only going to cut into this last section that I dropped down. I'm going to go in and create some nice separation up pretty high because we do want some volume and we do want to give this nice punky fun look. So I'm going to swivel up underneath and just let the razor do all the work and glide all the way down. You can see in here how it took like every other little piece gives a lot of movement. It's going to be really fun when we style this. Same thing. Just 
twist and swivel and pull it down, let the razor do all the work. You see right there. So we still have our bottom weight line. You can see all the texture and definition of that those two little cuts created with this texture blade. This whole motion that we're going over. Take kind of a diamond section going towards this point that we have building. And I am going to bring it across on the top here. We're going to do some fun texturizing on this side to where she can pull it all over if she wants or bring all this hair over and have a really fun, short, exposed side. Continue the same motion, but I'm going to switch gears and use our 9 tooth red blade texturizer. This is a little more fine. You still get the same range of motion, but it's not going to take out quite as much hair. I am still working on the baseline, but I want it to be a little bit softer. And I grab from this top section as well, and you can see where it had grown out from before. She does have some shorter pieces, and I'm going to use those as my guide. In order to really keep the, the flow where you want it to go, it really does help to move your hand in that direction and really keep your fingers and your hands at the same angle as your part. If you tend to, to hold the hair at a different angle, with any kind of razor or scissor cutting, you're going to end up creating a weird layer that wasn't intended in the hair. razors, it's very easy to do that. A lot of people shy away from them because it is easy to take out a chunk and then not know where to go next, but as long as you have a good pattern and a good map, it's really easy. Part of the reason why I chose this red blade texturizer is because it's not going to take out as much hair and it's going to provide a nice soft line. Even though I am removing some of the hair down here, it's not giving me that solid baseline that you would get with the regular straight blade razor. Now on this side, part of the fun with the swivel is you don't have to come all the way up. You just swivel it over or even come up underneath, which I like to do. It's a little more ergonomic and a little easier. And just swivel, same way we did before. Carving and carving and carving all the way towards our point. You can see how soft that line is here. Notice I am stopping at the ear because we do still want to maintain this weight here. Check that. I'm going to move a little bit more of that corner. By the way, I'm using this beautiful new pink carving comb, which also does have the silicone graphite in it, and it combs through the hair so much smoother than the original Via combs. I thought those were great, but this one blows it out of the water. It also does have the uh, crystal ions in it, so when you comb it through the hair, generating the negative ions, just like our brushes do, you can definitely see how much smoother it's eliminating all the tangles and it's just making this haircut that much easier. Again, we're going to follow with our parting. Now we're up into some of the higher layers here. So I am going to be a little more aggressive. Still using my red texture blade though because I don't want to create any kind of lines down here. I am going to come up a little bit higher though and scoop, scoop, scoop. This is where that rotating handle really comes in handy.
side up here. And really work off of this piece on this side. Scoop and take a lot of hair out of this section. On this top section, I'm going to work within this diamond to still get the same shape. Combing straight up, and again, these combs make all the difference in the world. Finding the length where I want this top layer to cut and using my red texture blade to give it that soft line. I'm just going to go one, two, three, and chop. That really created some nice soft texture, which we're gonna go back in with our blue texture blades, which is a little more dramatic, takes out a little more weight, and create some fun texture up here. Find my guide, there it is. There we go. You do wanna to try to keep the hair about the length of the blade, just to make it easier for you. So it cuts everything with one go. Two, three, one, two, three, chop. And you can see how some of those longer pieces stuck out, which is fine. We do want this side to be a little bit longer, and that's part of why I chose the red texture blade versus the normal razor to give it that softer texture. Now we're gonna go in with our blue six tooth texture blade now. Staying with our same angle. Doesn't have to be quite as precise because I'm not doing any lines at this point, any of the baselines. I'm just going in and creating some fun texture. Right, the same thing as we did before, just coming up and under. And letting the razor do all the work. Just twist and pull. And I am gonna stop about halfway through. So I don't want to shred out the ends too much. I want to still maintain some of this weight down here, but create a lot of inner texture. And that way you still have some nice weight lines down at the bottom. You can definitely get a little over ambitious with these texture shears. They are, they are so much fun going through the hair, but you do have to keep in mind that they take out a lot of weight. So you have to kind of envision what you want it to look like and not go overboard. Gonna come in about two inches from the scalp, giving it a nice texture up in the top, and then let go. You still have all your weight with lots of inner movement. And we get up into this top triangle that we were in. I'm gonna go the opposite way, and again with the swivel, I'm able to come all the way around. Go in and let the texture blend do all the work. Here's our little guide. I'm going to start there. I do want to maintain these ends, which is why I didn't take all that off with the red texture blade. I'm going in at that guide. I'm guiding it up. So let's see, I have all those little layers and then the longer ones on top. It's gonna to give a lot of volume and a lot of fun movement. There's that guy. Go in and push. And just slide right on up. See how much movement that has already? Now going to this side, we do want this to be longer. This is going to be the long part of the asymmetrical cut, so I don't want to take too many of these short layers, but I am going to blend it down. So we're going to keep this point in mind, continue our angle parting.
gonna switch back to my original straight edge razor. Now I do want to frame her face a little bit here, and since we have this piece that hits right under her chin. I'm gonna start this piece about right here just with a nice soft taper. And again, the swivel is so nice because I don't have to come up at any weird angle. I'll just turn it in and glide it very gently down the head. I don't wanna create a really strong hard line because I do want this to still be the longest piece. This is just going to give some nice framing. You can also come up underneath and swivel. Just a nice soft frame. On this side, we do want to add some of the texture from the other side without taking out any of this weight line. This is the longer side in the asymmetrical haircut, so it's going to come in here and use my blue texturizer. And again, start about halfway down, go through the ends. This is going to give us longer textured pieces and remove some of that weight, but still maintaining the look we're going for. On this side, being that we kind of entered the red zone a little bit here, you can see it's already thinner. I don't want to take out too much down here, so I'm going to start off just a little bit higher than halfway. Not push quite as aggressively, and then let go towards the ends. That's going to really give that some nice texture, but still have enough weight down here to hold the shape. Now on this side, I'm already liking how this is flowing, and all I want to do is create some nice texture up here on the top. And I'm going to come in pretty close to the scalp, scoop up, and maintain that pressure all the way down. that really opened up the blonde underneath too. You can really see all those layered pieces cutting through the blonde. And one more right back here. And we're gonna swivel up under, push. Just let it slide right through the hair. Now I'm looking and assessing from the front to make sure that everything blends and flows into the long side. I'm loving all these layers, but I just want to create a little more flow going to grab sections. Switch back over to my red texturizer. It's a little bit softer, but it's not as hard as the original straight edge. Just slide that over. Now that I have that looking awesome, I'm going to check this side. Make sure that if she wants to be a little more conservative and not have this really fun short piece showing, that she can lay this over. I'm going to go in. Again, gotta love this blue nine tooth te or six tooth texturizer. Really creates so much movement and takes out weight so effortlessly. Instead of having this hard line coming over, we go in, just gently pull it through, create that nice soft bit of movement. Now 
once you practice enough with these, the swivel motion just becomes second nature and it's really hard to go back to a fixed handle razor. Now she can get these fun little pieces to lay over. And so here, just to make sure that's a nice blend for when she does want to wear it a little more conservative. Again, we're going to take our soft red texture blade and just slide right on down. Little scoops. And now right here, it seems like there's a little bit of a weight line, but I don't want to remove any of this. So just on this little piece. Same thing, come up and under. Just lightly scoop down. It's almost the equivalent of a thinning texture shear with less effort. Okay, now I did switch over to the next shear because here in the bangs, I want this to be a nice hard line and with the razor, no matter how hard you try, I mean, it, it technically is possible, but it's really more effort than you need to put into it, especially when you have such a great shear as the next year, where hard, straight lines is really what it was made to do. So, I'm go in. And what I like to do, I'm going to hold it down with the comb and tap it, and that way you can make sure there's not a lot of tension, but you get it nice and precise and straight where you need it. See, you really, it's, it's ethical. The sheer really makes cutting a straight line extremely easy and then with the ergonomic handle I can come in at any angle and do what I need to do without putting myself in an awkward uncomfortable position. I'm so used to this rotating thumb, I honestly can't even imagine doing this without it. It's very awkward. It's pretty uncomfortable for your client too. I mean, your hand and your arm would be all in its face. really can't get a cleaner one. <laughs> and now because I have these short pieces that I'm going to kind of style a little bit of a faux hawk today, I want to make sure that she, no matter how often she wants to style it differently, doesn't have any of these weird overhanging pieces. I'm going to comb it all forward, pop it down, and make sure everything lines up. She has multiple styling op opportunities with this haircut. Now right here is another beautiful advantage to having a rotating thumb. See how this needs to blend down there a little bit better? Instead of getting in some weird awkward position, just let my thumb glide on down.
gonna go through and check everything. I'm liking the movement that I'm seeing through here. Even though this is a, a precision cut to some extent with a razor by making sure all your sectionings are lined up and you have a nice map laid out before you start, it is a very visual cut. You can kind of judge where you want to take more weight out, where you want to take more length off by fluffing it around and putting it in the style that it's going to be styled in. I'm loving all these layers. The only thing that I want to show you with the next shear and with this cape shield is that right back here. I love the line, but I want that to be nice and strong. So instead of trying to get it with the razor, which you could, I'm going to just glide this shear right along the cape shield. get that nice, clean, precise line.